Can I be a software tester? To answer that question, we need to clarify some topics. Then you can decide if you are a software tester by nature or not. Our agenda for today, or topics we will cover, what is software? Where is software? And what is software testing? Who can test the software? What is software testing types? Then we can answer this question. Can I be a software tester? Okay. First topic, what is a software? A software has a lot of definitions and the Google tells us the program or a software and other operating information used by a computer. This is a very technical definition of what is a software. Software assembly is a program, application, system, portal, anything of this or more is a software that may run on a PC, laptop, server, mobile, or generally any device to perform some operations predefined or wait for some user interactions, then the software will do another action based on those interactions. Let's take an example from software that has predefined actions to do. For example, the software that controls the traffic lights. It does not wait for any user interaction. It has a set of minutes or seconds that it should wait before switching a light on and another off to organize the traffic. An example for a user interaction software like a Facebook. You enter your username and password, then you can log in. You can add a text or an image and make a post. So this piece of software waits for your interaction with it. And of course, most of the softwares are just a mix of those types. That definition can be debated a lot, but generally, that's software. And yes, you understood it right, and they can list a lot of software and systems you are interacting with daily. Any mobile app is a software, any website is a software, any portal is a software, any uh, ATM machine uses a software, uh, your Apple Watch, your Android Watch use a lot of softwares. Okay, let's talk more about software. Where is software? We will give a lot of examples about softwares. Software is everywhere, controlling even our life. At work, BC is, has a lot of applications, email, office, all of that is a software. Switches has software, Net Facebook is a software, Twitter is a software, mobile applications is a software. Whatever you play, uh, any game you play in your mobile or your PlayStation is a piece of software. Medical equipments and tools use a software. Our cars now has a lot of softwares and sensors. In another word, software is anywhere. Software is generally an application that either just give you a piece of info, like let's say a website doesn't wait for your interaction, it just have uh, some text and some pages to give you specific information, or it can be dynamic. Like Amazon, you can purchase anything from it. So Amazon, for example, waits you to search for a specific item and add it in a shopping basket and add your details and even add your credit card details and you can buy that item. And it will ship it to your address. So mainly software is all around us. And what I mean by software is what I mean by website, by web portal, by uh, web application, uh, mobile application, mobile app, games, and software is either static or dynamic. Static means it has static content, and dynamic means it has content, and this content may change upon your interaction. What is software testing? And here is the fun part. Simply, software testing is the art of analyzing and noticing software behavior to find defects or issues to assure that software is doing its expected job and no more. So software testing is using an application or system to assure that it works fine and to assure that the software is doing its logic or business or functions, you name it. So let's differentiate first about testing a software and using a software. Testing, in the testing phase, you are expected to test the application to find issues. Then you should report those issues to get fixed. That happens usually when application is not released to its end user yet. Using an application 
It's just for the purpose of real life scenario. You are using the Facebook. You are not, you are not testing the Facebook. The testing phase has already done and Facebook is released and online. So whatever we are talking about in this course is about testing the application before it gets released. In another way, if you are testing WhatsApp, for example, to send a message and to check that message is received on the other device, this is testing. If you are adding a contact, a new contact to WhatsApp, and to check if that contact is added correctly and, and you can interact with it. Calling someone using WhatsApp, for example, and to check that the other person you are calling is having uh, a ringer and he can answer or reject. And in case he answered, you can hear him well and he can hear you well. So if you noticed at those statements, at those scenarios, at those tests, we stated doing some action and we stated the word check. Generally, testing is much like click and check attitude. So you do action and you check if the application made what's expected to do or not. So we click or do some action. That action might be text insertion, click, press, tab, touch. Even now, mobile phones can interact with your eyes. Then after doing that action, we check if the software has done what's expected to be done. Let's give some examples more. Opening Amazon.com or Google.com, for example. While testing, this is a test. Why? Because Amazon.com might be down. Or might is not operating well in Chrome. So you need to test on Firefox, for example, if Chrome is not supported environment for Amazon. Another example for testing, pressing Add to Cart in a shopping site is a test. Is a test to check if that item is added correctly with the quantity I uh, selected to the shopping basket correctly. So think about it again. When you press to watch that video that you are watching now, you have just used a functionality that was tested before by a tester to assure that when this e-learning system is published to the end user, there will be no issue. And the end user, you, will watch and listen to this video without any issues. So that's all testing about, simply doing some actions or steps and check for system behavior. Then evaluate if that behavior is expected behavior or not. Now the hard question, who can test the software? A simple answer for that, the one who knows what software should do, he's the best one who can test the software, right? Not that easy. Someone may know how the system should work, but can't test it. Why? Here we will explain more about the environment. Maybe you don't have the correct environment. For example, if I'm a developer or I'm testing an Android application and I am the developer or I am the tester and I have Google phone with Android version 4.1, for example, I will do the test on this phone. So this raises a lot of questions. What if the application is installed on another Google phone or on another Android version, 4.3 for example, or 4.4, or even 2.3? Will it work? No one can answer this before he tries it. What if the end user doesn't have Google phone? He has a Galaxy, HTC phone, or even Sony. All have an Android with different versions, and of course, screen, size differ from model to a model. Will it work in tablets? Will it work correct on landscape mode and portrait mode? A lot of scenarios here and a lot of environments. Now we can say a correct statement about who can test a software. Who knows how the software should behave and have access to the needed environment. And here is why uh, websites like Utest and Bugfinder that we will learn how to work on, why they need us. Now we can understand as environments become very different and there is a lot of combinations about the environment and this will give us a big list of environments that end user may use to install and interact with our application and the software is mainly done for that end user. So we cannot lose a user because he doesn't have uh, a Google phone or if he doesn't have 
and Android 4.1. So environments like the model of operating system, uh, the model of the phone itself. Now even we have sensors, a lot of sensors in the mobiles. We have camera quality. We have a lot of combinations. We have connectivity combinations, LTE, 4G, uh, Wi-Fi, 3G. So when you think about a real company, companies are seeking to do the test on a lot of environments. So this company either buy all those devices and interact with all those uh, environments or simply hire some tester like you or me who has the environment already and have some knowledge about software testing. So that's we are. We have, we own environments, whether uh, Windows uh, operating system, we have knowledge about Linux, we have iPhones, we have Androids. Everyone has its own environment. And maybe you have a lot of environments. Maybe you have an iPhone and an Android. Maybe you have two Android phones. Maybe you have access to uh, Windows PC and Apple Mac, for example. So companies has a choice even buy all those combinations or just rent your environment and ask you to do the test. So let's talk about testing types. There is a lot of testing types. We will not focus on them in the scope of this course, but we will have a fast snapshot about them. Black box testing is a type of testing that you are testing a software without any knowledge of its interactions of its interactions with backend, of interactions with online servers, with its interactions with the file system, for example. So you are just have some knowledge about the software, you know the business, you know uh, what it should do, then you do it. You don't have any technical background about the application. And that's mainly what we will do in most of our testing activities. White box testing is testing the software while you know a lot of technical info about the code or about its interaction with the back end. So we will not do this at U-Test or Bug Finders. We will not interact with this type of testing because it's that's requiring a lot of coding skills and requires a lot of time to check the design and that's not expected from you because generally the cycle or the project is one week. You will just have the application and you will know some basics and you will know what's expected from the functionalities. Then you will do the test. You will just take the application, install it on your environment and do the tests and report what works and what doesn't work. Mainly we are doing a type of black box testing called exploratory testing. So you are exploring the application, exploring the functionalities. And we have non-functional black box and white box where functional testing you are testing a functionality, black box without any knowledge about the application internal structure or internal knowledge, white box testing while you are knowing the internal knowledge. The non-functional testing types are like the automation testing. Automation testing when you are automating the tests you have done. So if we are testing, for example, Facebook using advanced tools, we are automating the logging and checking. So every time Facebook release a new a version that should be tested automatically. So we don't waste a lot of time on redoing specific tests. And that's automation. Most likely you will never do an automation on new test or bug finders. Performance testing is testing a specific application with a specific load. So if we are testing Facebook, Facebook is expected to handle about million concurrent users. So in performance testing, we simulate using advanced tools also. We simulate that million user is interacting with this site in the same time. Security testing. Security testing, you are testing the application. If someone can, uh, let's say, uh, buy item with a less amount, if someone can um, change in another user's profile, this is security testing. Is the accounts and the assets of the site are secured or not? And yes, you test to offer a lot of cycles for security testing, and it has a higher payment rate, but this is out of the scope of this course. Mainly in this course, we are focusing on black box exploratory testing. And we have usability testing also in the scope of U-Test and bug finders also. Usability testing is testing if the application is usable from, the, from your perspective. So the application is easy to use. 
most of those cycles about usability or projects about usability, you get access to a, to a system and you write a review. What you saw and was good and what you saw was not good, what was difficult, what was easy, then you get paid for that. So let's turn about the question, can I be a software tester? Sure, just ask yourself about issues you noticed this week. Did you use any mobile application that crashed for any specific or randomly even? While you are using any website, did you saw unclear error message? Did you ever installed any application from any app store or Google store and didn't work? Did your bank ATM machine took your valid MasterCard or Visa and didn't return it back to you? If you saw anything of this, so you saw an issue. You saw a defect, but the thing is, you didn't report it. Most likely you didn't report it. And here is the fun part about testing. You are getting access to a specific software in its testing phase. So it's not released yet. So whatever you found is most likely will get fixed. So you are contributing in building a specific software and we will learn the best way to report it in a right way. Also, we will see a lot of defects to get expectations more about what is the defect, how it should look like. So we will learn all of that. That's the conclusion here. If you understood what is the software is, if you can list two or three software you have interacted with, if you can list two or three issues you saw in a software, then please go to the next topic. If not, please reply this video again.